Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, June 6th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Malware is often obfuscated or encoded in order to bypass a basic signature-based detection algorithm. Now, one way how this is done is usually via XOR. So the attacker is just taking an existing binary and then applying a key via XOR to this binary. Of course, now your PE header and the like is no longer recognizable. And malware analysis, of course, gets a little bit more or difficult in order to analyze the malware you first have to figure out what is the key and then of course undo the XOR operation. Now to help you with analyzing binaries like this DDA today has a post showing you how to find the key that was used to encode a particular binary. What he's really doing here is he's using a specific property of XOR. If you do XOR something with zero, nothing really changes. So what you have to do is you have to find a section in the file that would have been all zeros uh, normally. And then by looking at this section, well, uh, you can then deduct the key by just looking at the data being present in that section, hopefully. And that's actually quite common for a malware. The key is short enough where it fit into this section of zeros. Luckily, typically PE files do have a number of sections that are all zeros. So what you're looking for here is a section with a somewhat random looking data that keeps repeating throughout the file. And chances are that this is your key. DDA is promising a second part in which he'll introduce a tool that automates this process. MC catchers, sometimes known under their brand name of Stingray, are sometimes used in order to detect cell phone users. Law enforcement has been known to use them in the past, and there have been various efforts to figure out how frequently these systems are used and where. Students at the University of Washington and now for the first time, as far as I know, managed to actually cover an entire city with detectors in order to find and then map these MC catchers and see where they are used. What they did is they built a little system that does detect or attempts to detect these devices and then they deploy them with volunteers at rideshare services. So essentially people like Uber drivers that drive all day around the city. So they had this box with this device in their trunk that was continuously monitoring the spectrum for suspicious activity. Now, in order to detect uh, these devices, you first need to know how the normal cell phone tower network looks like. So as part of this project, they actually mapped out all the cell phone towers and then tried to come up with algorithms to identify odd ones that are likely used uh, to impersonate existing cell phone towers in order to gather information about cell phone users in the area. So once they got this baseline, they identified, for example, cell towers that all of a sudden showed up in an odd location where they hadn't been seen before or that transmitted on different frequencies that they hadn't been transmitting on before. So far, the experiment had been running for two months and they mapped out Seattle, Washington, as well as Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So two not so small cities that they were able to cover with this technique. As a next step, they're proposing that they're actually trying to do some public records discovery in order to validate their finding. Keeping your DNS zone file up to date is of course very important in particular when it comes to the NS, the name server records. So for example, if the out of date name server uses a host name in a different domain that you don't control, then it is certainly possible that, for example, that domain expires and someone else will pick up that domain and now gain control over your zone. 
Because once they own the domain, all they have to do is set up a host name that matches the NS record that you are advertising, registering that with a registrar, and now a good part of the queries for your domain will be intercepted by this rogue name server. Now, sadly, this is somewhat common for corporate domains, but a researcher now found two country-level domains which are affected by this vulnerability. The first one was angola.ao. They apparently used at some point backupdns.com as a secondary name server, but no longer had their backupdns.com account set up. So this researcher was able to register themselves with BackupDNS.com as a customer and set up the configuration for BackupDNS.com to pull the Angola top-level domains from this researcher's name server instead of from the valid.ao name servers. The second country level domain was .na for Namibia. Very similar problem, just different service. They used Rapid Switch, which again is a DNS hosting service. And this researcher was able to transfer ownership of the account for .na to his own account. So overall, this isn't really a new problem, but certainly something that you should be aware of. And uh, like I said, very common for corporate domains. So make sure that you actually control all the host names that you're advertising as name service records. Or if you do outsource them, which of course is also very common and popular, make sure that your accounts are authenticated properly with this service. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.